I tell you now, weeping, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My uh, great-uncle, Patrick Henry Dolan, was a Holy Cross father, and in his day, a very great preacher. He was, during the 1920s, in charge of the mission band of that congregation, preaching parish missions throughout our land. He told me how, after World War I, at Catholic University in Washington, how he and the other deacons were trained to preach so as to fill a great huge church with his voice without the use of a microphone, because PA systems didn't exist then. I remember visiting him in retirement at Notre Dame University in the 1960s, a few years after the changes had started, And one day he pointed out a priest at some distance, and he said, he always called me Danny Boy, he said, Danny Boy, see that priest over there? He can give a homily. Now, a homily is a short sermon on the text or the saint of of the day, as I give at daily masses. He can give a homily, my uncle told me, but I cannot. When I preach... I have to sweat, and the people have to weep. Now that was the old-style sermon, and some of you may remember some of those sermons. Such a sermon was preached one Good Friday, several centuries ago, by a Franciscan missioner in Italy, and he was developing the theme at the end of the infinite love of Jesus crucified all of his sufferings and all of the coldness of our hearts toward our Savior. And someone in the congregation started to weep, and then another. And pretty soon a great kind of a collective sob went up from the whole assembly of those seated to hear that sermon. So much so you could barely hear the preacher through the sobs. There was a noble woman seated near the pulpit, and she, being a bit of a busybody, took it upon herself to ask the priest to cut short his sermon, saying that no one could hear him anyway. It is enough, she said. We have shed enough tears today, Father. But the good Franciscan answered her, Oh, continue to weep, my friends. Do not interrupt your tears, for blessed are they that mourn. All Saints' Day, with its octave, is over. But its elusive promise of heaven happiness in this life, the Beatitude, still invite us. Blessed are they who mourn. They shall be comforted. Last Sunday, I invited you to hunger and to thirst for justice, to get back for God from the government, from the legislatures and the courts, and especially the presidents and the political parties all of the good God's glory and his right to governance, which has been stolen away from him today unjustly. Now, this Sunday, some are weeping for having lost an election. But we all of us should be weeping that we could lose eternal life. Today's Mass presents to us two types of tears, the one sincere and spiritual, and thus salutary, and the other something sentimental and selfish, 
showy, in a word, commercial, with a price tag attached to it. St. Paul, picture him, bent over his manuscript, his parchment perhaps, or papyrus scroll, blotting the ink, wetting it with his tears, as he writes of those who who make a god out of their stomachs and who, who glory in things that should make us ashamed and who mind only earthly things that they are headed towards destruction. What ought we to be weeping over who hear the words of St. Paul every Sunday? Why, that God is so little loved, the infidelity of souls and of nations that have fallen away their eternal loss, perhaps, and that men derive, as a rule, so little good from the incarnation. We should weep, too, over the bitter passion of our Lord and the sorrows of Our Lady, which are, in a sense, continued today in the passion of the Church and her near disappearance from the sight of men all of which serve as powerful obstacles to the spread of the faith. And then, finally, only in last place, ought we to weep over temporal disasters, reverses of fortune, suffering, the separation of death, broken hearts, empty stomachs, and all of the rest. But over these things, if we mourn, Our Lord promises to comfort us. Now, in the gospel, we encounter quite a different kind of mourning. Our Savior enters into the house of Jairus and comes face to face with wasted weeping and a whole lot of noise. And he cannot He will not enter the room until it stops and there is silence. What is it, do you think, about, what is it about death in our day that makes people want to waste money, lots of money, by buying for themselves an exorbitant, showy funeral, which is cold in the end and commercial, as though the price tag on a casket or for the whole package from the undertaker could prove the sentiments of a heart. Today, thousands of dollars are wasted for caskets and for vaults. What vanity! And no money is set aside for masses or for the poor, for the education of our children in alms. The average funeral in America, and we're talking the low end of the market, runs $6,000. And yet, if you could believe it, there are Catholics who would complain that a few hundred of those dollars should be given to the church in a just stipend. Well, our Lord saw this kind of thing going on, the minstrels and the multitude making a rout, the gospel tells us. And he stopped in his tracks. In the Orient, back then, and still today, in China and India, say, it is customary to hire professional mourners, someone who is paid to weep. And even the poorest of families consider it a matter of honor to spend their money that way. And usually they would bring in a musician or two, somebody at our Lord's time, to play a mournful tune on a flute. And everybody in the room at a funeral is meant to be crying and and screaming and tearing at their vestments, their garments, 
and beating their breasts and throwing themselves violently on the floor. The same kind of mourning scene as has continued in the Middle East unchanged since the time of our Lord until this day. All of those mothers and the sons and spouses and children of that great number, some place they say between 250,000 and 600,000 who have died in one country since this war, the current one, has begun. They howl and they scream to show their bereavement each day. But in our country, it is no longer so. It seems we are almost embarrassed by tears. Who weeps anymore? Who mourns? No wonder no one finds comfort. When everything has to be happy, you know the Novus Ordo funeral with its white vestments and its alleluias. Funerals are declared now to celebrate a life. And if there is some afterthought of the next life, why then they say glibly, everyone is going to heaven. It's almost enough to make you feel guilty for shedding a tear or two for someone who is dear to you. But guilt? Guilt has no place in the modern religion. The dies irae that we sing at a requiem mass, the day of wrath, that wondrous poem is no more with its end. What shall I, poor man, be pleading? And who for me be interceding when even saints be comfort needing? That's replaced by on eagle's wings they shall bear me up. We're all going to heaven. Or perhaps a favorite rock tune or two that the deceased has decreed is to be played at his funeral. Gone, gone, all gone, mourning and tears. You may have heard about the case of that poor priest of the Novus Ordo in Cincinnati who died tragically a few weeks ago an extremely popular educator, and they had his funeral outdoors in a football stadium at one of the Catholic high schools, so-called. And here this poor man, they say in the papers, had had too much to drink on his way back from an evening of gambling and thus met his end. Can you imagine a sadder or a more shameful end for a priest? You would think that would be enough to make people stop and to weep at the thought of God's judgments and to mourn so untimely a passing. But no, but no. We ought to do so in charity for many a priest who has died today deceived in the matter of faith and perhaps having on his conscience having deceived others. Instead of sending everyone straight to heaven, as sometimes even foolish traditional or true Catholics would do, weep, weep thou my soul, weep for thy sins and weep for thy Savior. I don't know why, but... I have noticed that some men of a certain age, there must be some physiological factor involved. Some men, as they age, although they have been dry-eyed their whole lives, reach a point of being unable to contain their tears. I knew a man at one of our chapels once in, in Florida, a southern gentleman in every respect. But when he came to the Holy Communion, he wept such copious tears that he wet the communion cloth each Sunday. And he was embarrassed, no doubt. But ought we to be embarrassed by weeping at communion or sometimes perhaps 
in the confessional? Certainly not. The church considers that a gift. After Mass, I'll sing that collect. To pray for the gift of tears. We're not talking here the cheap sentiment which alone is permitted, that is to say, in sentimental-type movies, at a certain point, the strings become very lush and the music rises and you're meant to shed a tear or two and to feel good about things when the movie's done. No, no, we're talking about our Lord and our souls and the price of sin. Ladies must pardon the chauvinism of this last anecdote. I think I've told it before. When I was a deacon, before my ordination many years ago, the old priest, the spiritual director of the seminary, gave us a final talk in which he, like Polonius, put in every piece of possible advice. And at some point he said to us, cher monsieur, cher monsieur, dear gentlemen, Don't think that you've preached a good sermon when you've made the women cry. It's when you make the men cry that you've preached well. There was a priest once, a very holy priest, I think he was a saint, but his name escapes me, who was hearing the confession of a man who hadn't been for a long time, and he had serious mortal sins to confess He was rattling them off, matter-of-factly, as you would put your order in for fast food at McDonald's. And all of a sudden, the penitent, the man confessing, seemed to hear some, some noise coming from the other side of the grill. Sure enough, it was the noise of tears. Quiet at first, but then it grew louder. And he said, excuse me, fathers, Is there something wrong? Yes, the priest said through his sobs. There is something wrong. You will not weep for your sins. I must. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.